Thank you for listening to the BJJ Brick Podcast. We'll be bringing you Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and good times. We hope to flatten your Jiu-Jitsu learning curve, help you get the most out of your grappling ability, and meet your goals both on and off the mat. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the BJJ Brick Podcast. This is episode 346. I'm here with my good buddies, Byron and Gary, and we will be the guests for the show today. It's a topic episode, and we're going to be talking about training at home, uh, things you can do to stay in shape and stay sharp when you can't get to the gym for one reason or another. Guys, let's start this uh, show out with our quote. The secret of happiness is something to do. And I think being productive and being busy, it's just like that's a human need that we have. Um, so, you know, they say find something to do that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And so I think there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, and right now we're in a period of time where we're not grappling, most of us. And uh, we've got a lot of extra time on our hands and it will be miserable if we don't find something to do with that time. That's what today's episode is going to be about uh, guys, what do you do that brings happiness to your life? Jiu-jitsu. Awesome. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. You know, um, as most of you know, listen to me, is I grew up playing basketball every day of my life till I was in my mid-30s, and that brought joy to me. I, I just look forward to playing basketball all the time. And uh, as soon as I hit about 35, for some reason, I just quit basketball and decided to start jiu-jitsu. And uh, – now I'm now it's like I want to do jujitsu every free moment and uh, like Joe you said it is kind of rough right now with uh, most of us really not training um, trying to find something to do but jujitsu is what makes me happy. I gotta I gotta jump in here because uh, I know people will be listening to this episode for years to come. I mean it's off the mat training so it doesn't really matter why you're off the mat but uh, if this is two years or ten years down the road or whatever. Uh, this is we're in the middle of the uh, the COVID nineteen coronavirus uh, outbreak here, and gyms have shut down. People are staying home, and that sort of thing is happening. And we're actually re- recording this on March twenty first, so it even it airs a little bit after that still. So I, really, we we're we're talking about something, and we're a week or so. Uh, behind of what we actually know what's happening. So who knows what's going on here in Wichita or in Lake Jackson. Um, well, the, the good thing is we are practicing social distancing. We are making sure we're at least six feet apart. Uh, Byron and I are probably three times that, but going by miles, we're probably 18 miles apart. And Joe, uh, I have no freaking clue how far away we are, but it's a pretty long distance. Yeah, I'm like, I don't even want to be in the same state as these two guys. So I'm currently in South Louisiana. Oh, he even moved to Louisiana. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Joe is actually back and forth between Louisiana and Lake Jackson, Texas. But uh, so good job, guys. I'm proud of us for all practicing social distancing. And we've been doing it for, for years. Uh, <laughs> the, the key on that one is just don't wear deodorant and people will keep their own distance. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but hey, really, wear deodorant when you roll. Otherwise, That's you true. may not get to roll. Yeah, that could be a quote. That yeah, yeah, that's highly quotable. Uh, so I think it was the last week that Joe said something that was really quotable about team and the coach, um, and and then he actually, I'm proud of you, Joe. You did it. You typed it up and you posted it online. Um, Gary's, Gary's, Gary's quote, his wisdom. If you don't wear the other, you might not get to roll with anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you guys know it's true. You know, speaking of these tough times we're going through, uh, kind of here now with uh, COVID-19, you know, I do have a lesson, a life lesson that I'd like to drag back onto the mat or onto our training schedule. Um, but if you guys have been listening, you know that uh, besides jujitsu, I, I like to go to the gym, which... If you guys look at me, you'd never be able to tell. I look like a 98-pound weakling with a pencil neck. But <laughs> I do love to go to the YMCA to work out. Um, I do that probably seven days a week. And uh, uh, it's another thing I, I enjoy doing. And um, Byron's known me for a long time, and he knows that I'm always trying to build my home gym up. And kind of what I do is I'm always uh, on the lookout for uh, – 
piece of equipment, uh, wrestling mat. Byron knows I've got so many freaking mats, it's in, insane. Um, but um, this time we're just talking about, you know, I, I check Craigslist out. I check the Facebook marketplace out. I probably check those out every day. And I'm always looking for, you know, like a Swin Airdyne bike, uh, you know, dumbbells, weights, a squat rack, uh, you know, whatever. And and if I find a good deal, I'll try to buy it, um, you know, try to negotiate a good price. And, and you know, it, it's something I've done forever. It's just a habit. I, I check just about every day. And uh, when I do find something, I'll buy it if I if I get the low bid or or whatever and uh, bring it home. But still, rarely do I work out of my house. I, I don't know why I do this, but, you know, I've always been buying these things. And, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe three or four times a month I'll work out of my house when I don't have time to go to the Y. And I really like working out of the Y. So much more equipment, uh, people there to motivate me, uh, you know, just uh, – you know, and the variety of the equipment is really what I like. But, you know, so through many years, I do have my basement is a wrestling room. And then off to the side of it, I have another room that I just have filled with dumbbells and, you know, airdyne, elliptical machine, bench, stuff like that. And now it is coming in handy. Um, like I said, I never used it really much, uh, maybe three or four times a month, but now I'm using it every day, um, you know, with all the gyms closing due to, uh, COVID-19. Um, so it's coming in handy. And I just remember thinking, you know, it's like, man, I'm glad I, I bought all this stuff. And, um, you know, my wife would always look at me. It's like, you buy this and you don't ever use it, but now it's coming in handy. Who knows? I may need to use it for two months. I may need to use it for two weeks. I may need to use it for six months. Um, but you know, it just thinks me back, uh, you know, basically being prepared. Um, you know, I just make sure, uh, you know, like if we're in, taking it back out on the mat, always make sure we're prepared. Uh, we talked about this, I think, the other week, uh, you know, if I'm going to a tournament, um, you know, or, or to the gym, make sure I have my, you know, everything's in my gym bag. Um, you know, I'm just prepared. And, you know, I think that's what's helped me out here is I was prepared, had a stash of extra supplies and, uh, now I'm here being able to work out every day. Yeah, and it's, it is kind of funny that uh, many times after we get done recording a podcast, you say, hey, I'm headed to the Y. <laughs> That's just what you you work out, it seems like a lot. And I really admire that because uh, for myself, my main way I work out is jujitsu. It's the If I'm burning X amount of calories per week, most of those are on the mats doing jujitsu as far as workout calories get that get burned that's just how, that's how i work out it's the most enjoyable workout i have uh it's kind of a luxury to be able to enjoy our workouts and so i really think that the uh discipline that we've earned in jujitsu can carry over to uh to having us do some not so pleasant exercises not that they're not that they need to be really hard or excruciating but they're just not as fun and so gary we, what what's the main um, motivation that you that you that drives you to go to the Y or go go work out all the time. I don't like. I, I wish I had that, but I don't. <laughs> you know, that started when I was a kid. Um, first of all, I grew up an athlete. Um, you know, I've always played sports my whole life, but I was always the smallest and skinniest kid in my grade. Uh, when I played freshman football, I weighed ninety five pounds. Uh, when I was a freshman in college on the basketball team, I was five ten, one thirty five. I've always been very small and, you know, the one thing, and I, you know, now I'm just fat. Um, but, um, so what I'd always do, and I was never fast either. You know, normally if you're going to be small, you better be fast. I wasn't fast. So one thing I always did was I always like to work out to try to get bigger, uh, and stronger. I never liked being the smallest kid in class. So, I mean, to be honest, I've been working out since uh, my senior year in high school and I've probably never taken off more than a month at a time um, you know it's uh, so that was my motivation first of all to get bigger um, I hated being small but then second of all to, to get stronger to get more explosive and um, you know, it really helped my athletic performance. You know, in college, you know, I had the strong, I had the highest bench press and I had the highest uh, uh, squat on my team, and uh, I was also the lightest guy by far. Um, but it really helped my athletic performance, and now it's just become it's something ingrained in that I've done, and 
and jujitsu I get beat up doing and I don't lift heavy anymore um, I just I, I do a lot of cardio now too just to uh, you know keep my heart strong but I like to uh, lift weights I can still burn calories I'm I'm pushing my body through a full range of motion but I'm not taking the beating that I take at jujitsu with to get my neck rank turned one way get my shoulder cranked one way so um, I think uh, the big thing is it allows me to still train still be strong but i don't take the beating when i'm not on the mat and one other thing and and byron i think you can attest to this i've for a while there for probably about four or five years i stopped doing legs um you know i just get in the squat rack like me and joe always talk about and just do curls um but i stopped doing legs for (laughs) i stopped doing legs for a while and I'm telling you, on the jiu-jitsu mat, I pulled quads and I pulled hamstrings a lot. And Byron, you probably see me limping, you know, and, you know, saying, hey, I got a bad hammy or I got a bad quad. And the crazy thing is about two years ago, I stopped, I started doing legs again. And, you know, I'm not going heavy, and uh, but I'm really, you know, making sure I hit legs once or twice a week. And uh, I have not, and I'm going to find a piece of wood to knock on, I have not pulled a hammy or pulled a quad or pulled a uh, calf muscle in pro- since I started going back to doing legs and you know it's just one thing I realized that for my body to perform at its ultimate level um, besides rest and food and stretching and jiu-jitsu I do need to lift weights too the lifting weights just keeps me a little bit stronger and protects me from getting uh, getting injuries Joe do you have any off the mat exercises you, that you do at the house or that you did, you know, as to supplement your jiu-jitsu training over the past few years? Since I've been in this current job where I can train on a regular basis, um, jiu-jit- like you, jiu-jitsu has been my main yeah. um, form of exercise. When I come to work, I've got a little uh, like five by seven mat that I get out in the front room and I just leave it out and I stretch and, and do some bridges and shrimping. And I've got some dumbbells that I bring out. And when I'm at home, I've got some punching bags and, uh, take a few days a week and, and work out in the garage doing that. Well, Joe, you're also a, a skateboarder. Yeah. Uh, which oh, I think, yeah. uh, yeah, I, I think that's inc- great for athletics. Uh, builds balance, um, you know, builds your leg muscles, and but that balance just has to be a big key right there. You know, build your old core and everything of that sort. It's also something you can do while you're socially isolating. You just yeah. need a, you know, some concrete and a board, and just get out and get some exercise. So, good point, Gary. So, yeah. how oh. how much exercise is skateboarding? Like, if, like if you get. Like if you really get after it for thirty minutes, are you exhausted, or is it more of a technical thing to where even if you're really tr- you know practicing pretty hard, it's mostly the balance and 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 manipulating the board in, in smaller ways versus making you exhausted. Does that make sense? Is that a good question? Yeah, yeah, it, it, and it depends on on what you're working on and how good you are because when you're good at it, it's much easier. Let's just take an ollie for example. You're riding the skateboard, you're balancing on the board, which is a feat in itself if you're 50 and just starting. But then you have to jump, but not both feet jump at the same time. One foot's kind of got to jump before the other, and you got to pop the board up in the air and move your front. It's very complex. And because it's so unnatural, it really wears you out. I mean, I, I couldn't do reps of 10 practicing that when I first started. So uh, if you're working on something like that, it can be fairly taxing. Joe, that's awesome. At 53 years old, how, how long have you been skateboarding? Three years. I started when I was 50. Three years. Man, that's awesome. You started at 50, never skateboarded before, and you're doing ollies. You know, I, I watch these kids in the neighborhood do ollies, and, man, it's just so cool to watch that, and it's something I wish I could do. And, uh, you know, just even standing on a skateboard is tough for me, you know. And But I think that's cool that you picked that up. and But, you know, you... Byron, you're asking about exercise, but, you know, I I think another thing, you know, you're always going to get some exercise, even if you're not putting a ton of work into skateboarding. This is just what I think. I've never skateboarded before, but 
I'm just thinking if I go out to the skate park with just myself or you take sea bass out there with you or something, no matter what, you're just clearing your head and you're having a good time. And no matter what, you're going to win by just being outside, having a good time. I don't care how many calories you burn or anything. You're just going to smile and just enjoy life. And, you know, there's that's endless. You can't. I don't know what word I'm trying to say, but you just won. You just won, but just by doing that, it's just going to just make yeah. your day that much better. It goes back to our quote by John Burroughs, the secret of happiness is something to do. Yeah. Just doing yeah, something. And it doesn't have to be the perfect thing. If if it's because of the virus or maybe, you know, you're you're laid up and you're hurt for a while and you're, you're you know, maybe, maybe you're stuck at home for whatever reason, find something to do and it'll it'll help you greatly. As far as your your, your mental state of uh, being, uh, whether it's <laughs> working out or lifting weights, skateboarding, whatever, running, it, or just an activity around the house, like find a project and get to work on that. Find, if it's something to do, it's going to help you uh, become more happy. So there's a there's a lot of stuff that you could do. <laughs> Start a podcast, write an article, uh, yeah, call somebody. I wonder how many podcasts are going to be started, you know, during this, uh, you know, social distancing, isolation time, new podcasts come out. Yeah, that could be it. Maybe it'll be a little bit of a boom. We might move from the second best martial arts podcast to the third best. You know, somebody may come up and take one of our spots. That's true. That could easily yeah. happen. And that could be just the, you want any listeners out there. We invite yeah. the friendly competition. <laughs> So, Gary, that reminds me. Um, I was going to come on comment on that. Byron shared that uh, we got another shout out by somebody else who was talking about quality podcast out there. And once again, we were the number two on their list. And it got me to thinking maybe all of the other people involved in jujitsu uh, media. Maybe it's an inside joke to them. That <laughs> <laughs> the BJJ Brit podcast; those guys are they're number two. <laughs> that was that was roaming rolls, and uh, yeah, they, they should... put together a, an article about some of the top jujitsu podcasts to listen to when you're not on the mat. And uh, they yeah, mentioned we, us. We Thank should, you guys. Uh, we should share share a link to that because uh, we're not the only podcast around. And if you're liking this podcast, you might like some others too. And so. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll give a shout out to our competition. Yeah, it's all it's all the same. I mean, it's jujitsu, and and you yeah. you find you know a handful of podcasts you like, and yeah. maybe maybe we're annoyed. Maybe maybe you like our our quirky sense of humors or whatever we have going for us. I don't know what we have. What do we have going for us? <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> good looks. Yeah. Well, I don't know that. About that. <laughs> but uh, you know, speaking of that, it just made me think of. Uh, a uh, snafu Joe made the other day. Uh, Joe was trying to send uh, an email, I guess, to his wife, or but he sent it to both Byron and I, and it's about the podcast. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to read it, right? You know, it came two different uh, uh, messages on Facebook Messenger, but the you know, first one said, F and Byron is cutting our pay. Greedy, uh, B-A-S-T-A-R-D. Uh, Gary and I work our butts off while he sits around collecting checks f him and then the minute later it says oops that was meant <laughs> for someone else and you know it's like uh you know sometimes byron or joe and i we get mad at byron a little bit but uh you know byron does treat us well um you know he hasn't laid us off or anything here during this uh time and uh you know i know byron was afraid we were going to walk out so he's kind of been you know, uh, sucking up to Joe and I here lately, but, uh, I just want you to know, Byron, we, uh, we do, uh, well, I don't know if we appreciate you, but, uh, um, actually, I don't even know if we really like you, but <laughs> I don't know how to finish that sentence. No, Gary's afraid. <laughs> I sent a text message out to both Gary and Joe. It says, due to the COVID-19, I regret to inform you guys that I will be cutting your pay in half effectively now. Uh, here at the BJJ Break headquarters, we are doing everything we can to restore your pay, restore your weekly pay. Uh, you weekly guys, with an a. <laughs> <laughs> you guys get you know we we had fun with that. Um, yeah, so pay's got in half, but half a zero is basically the same. So yeah, and hey, we get to work from home. 
That's true. Now you get yeah. to work from home, which we've done anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing has changed. Well, this is, I'm trying to sell this on you guys as being, this provides happiness because you're doing something. How about that? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I will admit today, waking up Saturday and, uh, you know, Saturday is I'm all excited to go roll. And then, uh, yeah. you know, you and my son have this little thing after afterwards where uh, every Saturday me and him just, you know, have a guy's uh, go out to lunch and, uh, you know, don't even do that. It doesn't even feel like Saturday to me. So um, kind of weird. But uh, so you actually did give me something to do. So thank you, Byron. All right. Something to do. That's that's what the BJ BJ Brick Podcast is here to do. <laughs> Something. Uh, just I want to plug an audio book real quick here. Uh, your first year of BJJ. Uh, not if if you haven't started jujitsu, it can maybe get you get you kind of uh, head in the right direction when the gym is open back up. Uh, it's it'll help you select the right gym and, and that sort of thing. But really, uh, it's eleven ninety nine, and there's a link to the shop in the show notes. It'll it's about two and a half hours long. So if you're looking for something to do or listen to, that might be a good option for you. But uh, really, while uh, at this moment, um, while the gyms are closed, uh, calling them and just talking to them and you know, touching base and seeing when they might open them back up or whatever, that's, that's valid. But uh, we always say don't bother to get in shape before you go uh, start, start jiu-jitsu. Well, you can't start jiu-jitsu right now. Because they're close, <laughs> so this is the chance you get to get in shape before you start to go train, or to get in a little bit better shape, and uh, and and that's going to be off the mat training because we're not training on the mats right now. So th- there's there's a lot of things to do. The main thing, and I made a video uh, earlier this week. I guess it'd be last week by the time this airs about how important it is to train off the mat, especially when you're not able to train at all uh, on the mats. And uh, and I hope that sat well with you guys, and and uh, hope you guys took that to heart, because when, when we all go back onto the mats and, and start training, you could you could come back in really good shape, better than normal, be, or better than uh, that's that's my hope, because I'm I'm at times a bit lazy on the mats. I'll I'll grab a, a roll with maybe somebody who's not uh, doesn't push me as hard sometimes. You know, after two or three hard rolls, I'll grab a little easier roll and then I'll get another hard roll. Or maybe I, I, during a hard roll, I get a good position and I'm able to slow things down a little bit, take a deep breath. But if I do my off the mat training and I am able to push myself a little bit more than usual, I could come back in better shape than I was when this whole thing started. And I, that's my, my hopes. And that's what I'm pushing for. Well, I took about five days to heal up first. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good plan. I felt like, uh, I guess today's the 21st, and I think um, I didn't cut off jujitsu till about the, uh, let's say maybe the 9th or 10th. You know, we had the seminar on the 7th, and I trained at least once after that, maybe twice. And I did a crap ton of work around my house at the same time. I planted 30 trees for a hedge. Yeah, yeah, so dug 30 holes at jujitsu. Every hole you dig, there's roots and rocks, and I'm just, (laughs) you know. Very treasure. Buried treasure. Well, Sebastian <laughs> was looking for that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, come the, uh, I don't know, the ninth or 10th, uh, man, I was wore out. Both my shoulders were killing me, I had chronic lower back pain. And I didn't do anything uh, other than just normal stuff for about four or five days. And uh, so when I go back to jujitsu, I might not necessarily be in better shape, but I'll feel better for the first week or so. Yeah, um, I'm thinking the same thing, Joe. I, I've noticed my wrists feel a lot better. Um, you know, I've got wrists that are so jacked up that both of them, I can barely move them and, uh, they do feel a lot better. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of us are going to be healthier, but, uh, um, one thing I've been trying to do, which I do slack on is I'm trying to spend more time stretching and I bet I've been stretching, you know, 30 to 45 minutes a day, uh, you know, two, three times a day, um, which is something I never did before. And, uh, my goal is, uh, you know, I, I know my cardio will be off. Um, my strength will always be kind of about the same, but I want to come back more flexible. Um, uh, it'll help with injury prevention, which I talked about earlier, but I also think it'll, you know, help my jujitsu get better just by being a little bit more flexible. So that's kind of my little goal, uh, what I'm working on while I'm, uh, while I'm in, uh, isolation. You know, for a long time, uh, I did jujitsu and still worked on the boats. And I did a 
four, same schedule I'm on now, 14 or 14. But so back then it was 14 days I couldn't do jujitsu. And so uh, I'd take some mats on the boat, some exercise equipment on the boat. But one thing that I did back then that I'm going to start doing this week in case this persists for a long time is I would set up uh, some circuit training that I would do in like five minute on and one minute off increments. I always felt like, and it's just anecdotal, it's, this isn't like the results of a study, but for me, I always felt like that kept me sort of in that rhythm so that then when I did go to class uh, and we got to the open mat portion of class, I, I was accustomed to that uh, uh, five, five minutes on a minute off or seven minutes on a minute off, whatever your gym does, uh, it kind of keeps you in that rhythm. Awesome. I like that. So uh, one, one thing that, and I like that, that is good stuff is the idea of doing those kind of drills by yourselves. And the, I, I, I recommend the, the one with BJ phonetics with John Danaher. Um, it's, I was surprised with how good it was. And, and, and I'm, I guess I'm always surprised with how, how good John Danaher stuff is. And I just continually, I shouldn't be. <laughs> He's a very smart person. He's obsessed with uh, jujitsu, and those two things combine to make a, a great uh, coach or instructor. And I learned things about the shrimp crawl. You know, having do, done this for eighteen years now, uh, I, I learned details about the shrimp crawl that I really didn't understand or, 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 or realize, and the and all sorts of different things. There's and this it, it's. I don't know if it's, I would call it long. There's four volumes to it, um, 30-ish minutes long. Each one of them is a little shorter. And some of them are a little longer. But So there's a lot of content there, and a lot of it's him explaining why this is important and, and, and how to do this and, and when, is, when does it apply. But uh, it's, it's good for a couple reasons. It's good because you could do the drills. It's, it's nice because it helps you understand why the drills are. And then when you find yourself showing the same drill to a, a new person or somebody else, Having some of his details that you could share with that person really helps you out as a as a coach uh, or an instructor passing down that knowledge. Because if you explain why you shrimp this particular way or why we don't shrimp that particular way, that has a lot more value than just say do it like this. And Byron, just think about you now um, teaching some somebody brand new while doing shrimp crawls. Like how much more you know knowledge you can give that person, which will set them on a better foot, you know, when they're just starting, just from watching that uh, video from Danaher. And and real quick, I know Byron was talking about John Danaher's video at BJJ Fanatics. Um, what he's saying is John Danaher is giving, a, is giving away a free drills, uh, solo drills DVD or instructional, uh, um, whatever you want to call it, on at BJJ Fanatics. And uh, so definitely go check it out if you haven't. Um, I know I have it. I know Byron has it. Joe, did you have you I, downloaded it? I, I didn't pick that one up. No. Okay. Yep. Um, but um, just to go, you know, I'm changing subjects here real quick. But there's a lot of awesome free content out there from uh, people trying to help out. You know, jujitsu guys in isolation. I know I picked up a, a awesome triangle video for free from uh, Brandon McCothran, uh, BMAC. Um, Bernardo Faria, who we've had on the show before, I picked up, uh, no gi, uh, uh, pressure passing, um, Stefan Kesting. I just picked up no gi leg locks the other day. So, um, all you guys there go to grapple arts, go to BJJ fanatics, uh, go to, uh, B Mac site, uh, Brandon McCothran. And, uh, there's some good stuff out there and I've, there's probably more. Those are just the ones that I've seen that I've picked stuff up. Um, so uh, it's awesome. Everybody coming together and helping each other out. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, shout out to the jujitsu community. Cause uh, those guys have really stepped up, um, donated a, a lot of their time and resources. You know, I've seen a lot of gym owners that are making uh, tutorials for their own students. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The jujitsu community is really handling this well. So let's hope uh, it doesn't last too much longer. I made like a little mini podcast slash video episode. If if you could support your gym, which maybe you can't, you know, maybe maybe, maybe your job's on the line, or maybe it's gone right now. But if you can support your gym, you you should. If you want to be there when you get when it's uh, this whole thing is uh, is gone. So um, 
And remember that, support your local gym if you can. Um, some people aren't on that option. Myself, I'm lucky I get an essential job working in banking, and my wife's a teacher, uh, which even though she's not working, she gets paid. So we're one of the lucky ones. But not only just uh, your local uh jujitsu gym support your local businesses too those are the ones who are gonna you know it's gonna be harder for them to bounce back versus a, a walmart or a target um just these smaller stores is the backbone of america and uh, it'd be neat to uh you know as many of these survive and keep thriving as possible after we come out of this yeah and not just america i mean podcasts go all over the world yeah this is a global yeah. problem yeah, no matter where you yep. are, if you can support local, yep. um, those people, <laughs> you, like yeah. literally, you're looking at the person whose whose job is on the line and whose business that they started. So, uh, yeah. yeah, do that. So yeah. we, today, well, real quick, I'll tell you a quick story, Byron. Today, I was trying to get a hamburger meat for lunch, and uh, you know, go to the big chain stores, and uh, as usual, everybody's hoarded it, and there's nothing, nothing there. And I've tried three days in a row, and struck out all three days. And I remembered a little smaller meat market down the street, um, a couple miles from my house. I've never been to ever, and uh, go in there and uh, the, end up getting a pound of hamburger meat. And I will tell you, just because of the cool service and the people working there, I now have a new shop to go to, Man, and it's something awesome. I never even thought about. And uh, they hooked me up in a time of need, and I like it that they were only giving one pound away to everybody, so people can hoard it. Um, but uh, I will definitely be back. Nice. Hey, I want to throw one more thing out before we segue off this to uh, about a month ago, maybe it was six weeks ago. My coach came up to me and uh, said he had a friend coming in, uh, was going to train in the Houston area for a while and was looking to uh, uh, do some privates to pay, help pay for his travel. I was wondering if people would be willing to pay for the privates in advance. So then he would have the money to come and we'd collect on it when he got here. So, I said sure, so I uh, I paid for private, and I took it a few weeks later. If your coach makes part of his income by doing privates and that kind of thing, you can pay him today if that's within your budget. You can pay him today for a private six weeks from now or something, and that'd awesome. be that'd be really helpful, I'm sure. Yeah, that's awesome, Joe. Yeah, that's really thinking outside the box, and 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 and. Having that little bit of income coming in is way better than nothing. For, and then once the gym opens back up, having the income of the full, you know, student base, um, that person be able to, the coach being able to donate some of their time, not really donate, but then teach the lesson that they've already been paid for. And that's a that's a really good. Uh, it's win win. You ever watch like uh, National Geographic, you know, and they show the the safari, you know, the, the animals on the, like the Serengeti and, you know, when they're the wildebeest are migrating in the zebras and everything. And they're all crossing the river and there's just like tons of them just crossing the river and, um, you know, just for miles and miles, that's going to be like when uh, jujitsu schools start open, you're just going to see just ton of people just, uh, running straight to the jujitsu school. It's going to be awesome. It might be. I don't see it. You're a very optimistic guy, Gary. So I think some of them will be crossing the river and there'll be nothing there because some gyms, it's just reality. They won't well, be able so, to stay well, open. Okay. So, yeah, I, I do believe some gyms will still be out open, but that doesn't mean you're going to quit jujitsu. Yeah. Uh, most, some, you know, if you live in a bigger area, there's going to be other places to train at. And, uh, I mean, I wish that none of this ever happened so no schools would go out of business, but the reality is some are. But, I, what I just want is, you know, the people who love jujitsu, like you guys asked a question earlier to me, what's my favorite thing to do? And it's jujitsu. And like, man, I have all that pent up aggression. Like the day, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to be like when I was five years old and it was Christmas morning. Uh, that's kind of what it's going to be like for me. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just, you know, it, if some of them aren't there, um, definitely make sure you, uh, you know, find another school. Yeah. And yeah, then here's the know, other problem with the wilderness, wilderness thing, Gary, that I see is it's, it's out of your routine. So if every Monday and Wednesday and Friday after work, you go train or whatever your schedule is, that's been disrupted. And so now maybe every Monday and Wednesday and Friday, you go out to dinner or I guess that's not really happening now. No, you, you do something else. That. So, uh, that, that's why I really am, um, urging everybody to stay fit, stay active. So, uh, when jujitsu comes back, 
not only do you not have to like get back in shape, like your body is ready for it and it feels really good. It, you're healthy, you're healed up, your wrists aren't so bad, Gary, those sort of things. So I think there's a couple of hurdles in, in, that have been that are gonna be put between people and, and getting back on the mats. And, and I just, I hate to see that, but I know some people, you know, like some people are like, hey, I'm gonna take a break for a month. A month turns into two and then they're done. Like, is that gonna happen to a lot of people? It might, it might not, I hope not. Hopefully, uh, I, I, yeah, I can get it, Joe. I'm with you on this one, Byron. I'm really worried about that. I think on any, any given day, there might be as many as 15 to 30 percent of the people in a jiu-jitsu school that are discouraged. They're thinking about quitting. They're they're questioning, you know, whether it's worth putting all this time and effort into it. There's always a group of those people, and you give them six weeks off. You know, I, I'm worried that some of them might just. Uh, uh, take take this and, and go, or or maybe they come back after being out six weeks, and they're like, "Oh God, this is harder than I remember." And yeah, I'm with you, Byron. I worry that this could have a negative effect on our numbers. But I do think oh, Gary's thing. A lot of us will be like no, the Willoughby's running back. <laughs> yeah, I do think it'll have a negative effect. No ifs, ands, or buts. We're going to have a lot of people who can't afford it. Um, yep. You know, there are a lot of people who are going to lose their jobs. Um, you know, for for a period of time and it's going to take them a while to come back. And I, I do think the numbers are going to be affected, which is going to lead to some schools being closed. But, you know, guys, like I said, I I'm very blessed. I, I'm lucky where my wife and I are still getting a steady paycheck and, uh, you know, I'll be able to train. And when I, when everything opens back up, I'm going to be that guy running like a wildebeest crossing the river, you know, going as fast as I can to get there. Um, but I, the shame of it all, I, I do feel we are going to lose a lot of people. And But I, I do think the other thing I think could happen, and, and I've seen some memes of this, but I think it could be true, is some people who have stopped training. And I know there's people who stopped training because they're worried about getting tapped. And, you know, first of all, that's never a good recipe. You know, somebody's tapping them out. But we're all going to come back rusty. So if you do want to, if you're towing that line, you've been wanting to come back, but you're a little worried because your game isn't up to par of everybody else. Everybody's going to come back rusty. It's uh, there. It's not, it's everybody's going to be the same. So uh, it's a time to, uh, to uh, feast. Are you talking to a guy whose name is rusty or is said Everybody's going to come back rusty. <laughs> everybody's game is going to be a little off, okay. a little rusty. Not, it's not going to be well-oiled. Ah. Yeah. Well, like, we got like some... Like rusty. <laughs> <laughs> I know we have a few rusties out there listening just, you know, by the math. <laughs> uh, so we have some... I just... I, I collected uh, some articles and some links and stuff to for us to kind of talk about as far as off-the-mat fitness and you know, solo drills and instructionals are definitely a big part of that. Uh, a big part of jujitsu is just the knowledge base, and you can pick up a lot of that without having to actually go and train with the, the whole team. Here's one advantage I have that hopefully some of you guys could also uh, develop: is I can train at home. Uh, my my wife is perfectly happy training a couple times a week. And uh, she doesn't have the same drive that I do towards jujitsu. But if I say, hey, can we try some stuff or can we, you know, let's, let's do but some smooth better. rolling for a little while. She's what? She's better. Yeah. At jujitsu. <laughs> By far. By far. Uh, so, I, like, I have a training partner. And, and so that's really nice. That's in, But unless you, if you have people that live with you, you could also potentially have a training partner because it... If one of you guys get sick, you're all getting sick. <laughs> like, yeah. there's really no way around that if you're living together. And so you, you might as well train. So if you, if it if it might mean that you're going to teach a little bit of really basic jujitsu, and they get to explore that, you know, here's here's what a rear naked choke is like. You want to try it on me? Okay, now you you, you can feel it. Okay, yeah, that's crazy, huh? <laughs> and just real basic. And here's how you get out of that. Here's how you hold this position or something. There's real basic stuff. You could easily find yourself being a white belt with just a couple of months. And showing a spouse some drills or some some basic techniques, and and there you are, you're teaching already, and uh, it, and maybe maybe when Jujitsu comes back, two of you guys go out, or maybe the whole family goes to Jujitsu because now everyone's interested in trying it out. And I like that idea, Byron. So let's say, um, you know, I'm home from work, I'm working at home, or I got furloughed or whatever, and your kids are home, and you know now they're saying you know maybe homeschooling kids. 
How about from 12 to 1, you teach your kids jiu-jitsu? Great idea. I like it, Vern. Nice. I like that idea, yeah. Gary. Yeah. Yep, 12 to 1 is jiu-jitsu. So, and uh, teach a little. Teach a little bit. So this morning, we recorded this on a Saturday, got up, and we decided uh, we're going to do some exercising, and we did some kettlebell stuff, uh, some body weight fitness, a bunch of squats, and and in in you know stuff like that, and then uh, we did a. My wife pulled up. My wife does group fitness online or no, at the Y. She likes those classes. She'll go during her lunch break and do a class. She'll go after work sometimes and do a class. I don't think she goes before work. <laughs> she used to, uh, but that's kind of her her routine is to do these classes. And she's got a couple of buddies that she that they kind of go together and meet up there, and and it's it, it's similar to jiu jitsu. Group fitness is is helpful, but now she's doing the group fitness and the these classes that are led by an instructor. They have this stuff online. They have it on YouTube. And so at the end of our workout, she, towards the end of our workout, <laughs> she pulled up a group fitness thing and it was hard. It's, it's, it's hard for a few reasons. It's physically, it's, it's hard after a little while. Cause I'm not used to doing these exercises. Like same thing. It would be hard if, if we started rolling with anybody in the whole classroom, they would say, this is really hard. And I would say, yeah, we're going slow still. Uh, it's also hard because I don't have the rhythm. <laughs> I often feel like I have Byron, two left feet. The the great thing is, and you know, Byron was talking to Joe and I uh, before the show aired. But by the end of the the class, Byron was actually swinging on the pole, and he did a whole bunch <laughs> of you know different moves on the pole by the time it was over. So you know, you should be proud of yourself. Yeah, I, I really came a long ways in just the one class. Uh, but no, they they. So I had done yesterday. I while well, she was at work and I was at home, I did my own kind of fitness routine. I just kind of made up with the kettlebell. I did some Turkish get ups and did some squats with the kettlebell, uh, and I don't know, just a few things that kind of got my heart rate up and and you know got sweaty. But this class and doing online classes like this, like just put it, pull it up on YouTube and do it. They make you do it more, like a, like. You know when I quit doing squats? When I got kind of tired. <laughs> no, I got kind of tired, and there were still like five more. I'm like, are you serious? We're doing five more of these things. <laughs> like, So that was a real benefit for me uh, was when she put that on there. It's like, okay, we're doing this, I guess. And she's used to it. She's she's doing great on this. I'm struggling to figure out. They, they, they have names for moves, and I have to like watch them do the move, and she just knows the name of the move. It's it's very similar to Jiu-Jitsu as far as, like, okay, guys, we're going to do warm-up with armbar drill. Pretty much everybody knows what that means, except for a couple of the new people, and they're struggling just to figure out what that even means. And so I'm going through this new learning curve of having to learn even terminology and stuff. But it's it is they are good workouts. They they do get your heart rate up. They they do get. Uh, I'm sure I'm adding flexibility and and balance on these things. So those and then after we did that, uh, she's like, let's do some yoga, and she had a, a, like a yoga routine that. Was awesome. almost torture. <laughs> no, I, I am. I am. I yoga is brutal. Yeah, especially if you're like me. I'm very flexible in some respects, like my hips, and and like kind of what you would think of with guard work. But I can't even if I stand with my feet flat on the mat and lean forward to touch. I can't touch my toes. I can't touch the top of my feet. I could. I could touch mid shin. Like I am not flexible in in my hamstrings. And so we worked out those quite a, quite a bit, stretching and that sort of thing. And. And we did a whole yoga routine as well. So group fitness, YouTube that. And if I were to do yoga, I'll probably do yoga a couple times a week doing this, maybe a little bit more, hopefully. I I, I think I should pull up something online on YouTube and and do their routine versus me just make up my stretches and, and do what I think until I think I'm good. Do the, do the uh, routine that's provided there, and it will push you a little bit more. And they'll usually there's a little bit more reasoning behind why they're doing this in this order or what's next. I, I love the idea, Byron, about the classes online. I, I never even thought about doing that. Um, I have done a couple classes. I rarely ever do them, but sometimes uh, I've done them just for something different. And they do work. They work your butt off. And uh, I never thought of even trying that. And because of what, you know, I just learned something right now that I think is going to help me, uh, you know, increase my fitness while I'm out of jujitsu. Yeah, and what's really cool is – on on YouTube, she pulled up her instructor that she likes to go to, um, and there she is. Like, <laughs> obviously, you don't have to be famous to be on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we're doing this now, uh, but um, 
she still goes to the same class. I mean, it was the same instructor. It, That's awesome. The, the video had you know several thousands of views. It's been up for a little while, but uh, it was it was what she was familiar with, and she she likes she knows which instructor she likes. She knows which one she doesn't like, and she went to her class. There's really a lot of opportunity out there to to put something on, uh, throw it on your phone or tablet or TV or however you watch YouTube at home, and 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 get to working out and and make that a bit of a routine, and uh, and it will work. Yeah. I I guess I wasn't surprised. I knew it was going to be a good workout, but man, I really feel like I'm clumsy and out of shape when I'm doing things that aren't jujitsu. <laughs> so hopefully that'll change as these uh, weeks tick by and I get in a little better shape. Joe and Joe has a uh, kind of a morning yoga flexibility routine. Yeah, I just like that chick. Uh, her name's Tara Styles, and she's got a whole bunch of their ten minute videos. Pretty easy to follow. Um, yeah, so it's it's just a good option. She's got some that, you know, she markets them as for strength and fitness and some flexibility, whatever. But I like the ten minute increments. It's a good way to start your day. Yeah, I'm looking through that uh, link you sent, and uh, boy, she does have a ton of different stuff out there. And like, I like they're not. And I, I'm with Byron when I think if your hamstrings aren't very very flexible, an hour long yoga which i've done before it's brutal uh, I, I like the shorter times like this one you just sense 10 minutes some of the other stuff i'm looking at is 10 15 you know minutes there and for me i think that's perfect for me um you know while i try to get better at this So, uh, I know, Gary, you have some weights at home. I have a single kettlebell, and I think it's probably would be about 35 pounds or so, and there is a lot I can do with that. Joe, do you have any uh, workout equipment or weights at home? Well, like I said, at, at home I've got uh, I've got some dumbbells, but I don't use them at home. I do mostly boxing-type okay. workouts when I'm home. Here at the apartment at work I have um, some dumbbells, they're adjustable. I think I have enough weights I could put together uh, two fifty or sixty pound dumbbells. But usually I've got them broken down into like <clears throat> one set that's a twenty and one set that's two thirties or something. Yeah. And uh, I, I stick to pretty simple exercises. You know, some overhead presses. Uh, I do push ups. I do uh, bent over rows. You know, to work my upper back. Pretty simple stuff. How about you, uh, Gary? What what kind of exercise do you like? Well, I was going to say, uh, we're talking about equipment, but even if you don't have equipment, uh, Joe just talked about push-ups. I, I personally think push-ups are one of the best exercises you can do. You know, it's going to build your, your triceps, it's going to build your, your chest, it's going to build your shoulders, plus uh, your core. It's almost like doing a plank. Uh, so, I mean, without any equipment, you can do push-ups, you can do pull-ups, uh, you can do planks, you can just do regular squats, you can do jumping squats. Um, there is just so much you can do, even if you don't have equipment, plus you can go out and uh, run. Um, so, no equipment whatsoever if you're having trouble you know, hey, I don't have a pull-up bar. You probably have a park somewhere near your house. Run to your park, get a little cardio, do some pull-ups, do some push-ups there, and then run back. Uh, great little exercise. Um, but one thing that uh, last week was a little cold, so I only got out one day. But I, one thing I really like to do is ride my mountain bike. Uh, I, uh, that's another one of my hobbies is I've, I've rode my mountain bike a lot um, for years. And uh, it's nice. I have a, what's called a rail trail. It's a uh, where a railroad track used to be. They've now turned it into like a double track and, uh, it's, uh, 24 miles one way. So, uh, if I really feel like going crazy, I can do the whole 48 miles. Um, how far east does it uh, go, Gary? It goes all the way to garden plain. Um, so it's nice. Um, you know, I, I normally don't do that. Um, normally I'll do, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20, 25 miles. Um, but, uh, um, and I mean, you can either take a leisurely ride if you just want to, uh, relax or, or you can just, you know, go t- go hard, um, really tax your, tax your lungs, tax your, uh, uh, legs. But, you know, the cool thing is it's all through farm fields. It's all through the middle of nowhere. So all I see is lakes, creeks, turkey, deer, snakes, um, you know, not this time of year, but you know, it's just, uh, not only can I turn it into a crazy exercise, but I also, uh, relieve all the stresses, you know, kind of like what jujitsu does that I've had during the day, um, which is something I really like to do. But 
the bad thing is the only day we really had good this last week weather-wise was Thursday, and that day we had like a 30-mile-an-hour wind. Um, so on my way back, I was going straight into the wind for 12 miles, and I thought I was going to have a heart attack. So um, uh, that was a little crazy. Yeah, I have a rail trail by my house, and it looks like a, mine is called the Redbud Trail, and yours yeah, I don't is like called your the, trail. the Prairie Sunset Trail. Yours yeah. is more out there in the I country. I'm a little bit more in, in the yeah. And your trails, uh, all hard rock. And it is, so mine, yeah. <laughs> but I run that. Yeah, I don't like. I, I like running it because I I could. Uh, nobody's on that thing, and yeah. so I'll I'll get out there and I'll run two or three miles, and I'll my dog could be off the leash all. But when we have to cross a major street, you know, and, and that's only every mile, and so yeah. um, she gets to, she keeps up with me pretty good. But if she wants to go smell something, she'll catch up when she's when she's ready. Yeah, <laughs> like awesome. uh, take another, you know, like. It's uh, it's really nice to have that, and and I'm running you know, it not on the bike, but yeah, yeah. But what's cool about mine, uh, Joe, you'll get a kick out of this, but it goes through a lot of farms, uh, farm territory, and at one point, I go underneath into a tunnel, and I'm going over a runway, which is where a farmer takes his little uh, uh, crop dusting plane out. So nice. it's uh, yeah, <laughs> and I've actually used that before when I got caught out in the rain, uh, but. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you just got to make sure you don't, you know, where I'm going, stay on the trail. If you go off, uh, somebody may shoot at you. Um, so uh, just stay <laughs> on the trail. <laughs> you know, right right now, a lot of our listeners are thinking that uh, dogs are pretty fast animals. And Byron's talking about his how his dog kind of keeps up fairly well. Uh, Byron, why don't you tell us about your dog? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my dog is missing one of her back legs. She's a uh, she's a red healer, um, very active, and I think she's probably three or three and a half years old, about thirty ish pounds. Uh, but she just she used to be faster than me uh, when I was on my bike, and I don't know how fast that is, you know, miles per hour wise. But I like if we both go out and I ride full speed, she's faster than me, and she wrecked one time chasing a rabbit. And wiped out, smacked into a tree, and, and shattered her her femur. Uh, a vet tried to repair it. Uh, long story short, uh, after a couple times, couldn't couldn't fix it, and so they had to amputate the leg. She's good to go. A dog is a three legged animal that comes with one spare, and she has used her spare. So, but she's she's perfectly happy running uh, three miles at about a. She she could I could, I could run one mile at like an eight minute pace, maybe maybe a little bit more. She's good on that one, and if I run, if I'm running anything three or more, it's it's slower. It's it's around ten for most of those, and she's she's good to go on that. She's not. Her issue awesome. is jumping up. Like sometimes she doesn't really want to jump up into my car. She can, and she usually does, but occasionally she's like, eh, I want to be lifted. <laughs> she doesn't have that power Don't to lift her. herself. Uh, but um, that's if, if you have the opportunity to adopt a dog that has missing the leg, man. They're let them blow you away. They, they, it's going to be. It's still just a dog. She doesn't know about this. I mean, she she has no. I don't think she really has self awareness that she's different than other dogs, or that she's. I don't. Not even as fast as she used to be. <laughs> like her sprint is not that fast anymore. But her her distance running, she does great. She is always. You get the. You get. I get my running shorts on and and my shoes. She is excited to go out and run and. uh so she gets that between me and my wife. She almost runs every day. Byron, could you post a picture of yourself in your <laughs> running shorts? <laughs> there are so many of those already posted, Gary. <laughs> yes, just they're quite have, small. Just got to have a Tinder account to see them. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I think it's a grinder account there, Joe. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm on all the social media platforms. <laughs> oh, you guys are tough on me. <laughs> well, you're our boss, Byron. But yeah, that's that's my dog, and and you know what is kind of funny that as I as I look at my current situation with how often I run or exercise off the mat, I think most of the times I run, I look at my dog and I'm like, well, my Becky didn't. Didn't run with her. Her name is Cheese, the dog's name. So, you know, Becky didn't take Cheese out for a run. I guess I should. And so I'll go, I'll go run two or three miles. Like, I'm literally exercising because of my dog. And I'm awesome. glad I do that. But if I didn't yep. have her, I'm sure I would run a lot less. And so just yep. 
having a dog for me is helping keep me fit. <laughs> yeah. I'm, gl- I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, I will tell you this, Byron. I, I'm the same way. I, I don't run with my dog. Um, my dog is very elderly, uh, but uh, you know, every day my dog at least gets one thirty minute walk. And you know, I as much as I do, sometimes I look at uh, walking as exercise. I, I really do. I just think it's so great for my mind to just get me out. And uh, there's days where you know I just go out for a walk, and like if you come home, my dog will let you know if if my wife hasn't given her a walk, you know, she's going to look you right in the eye and be like, Hey, let's get outside. And, uh, I think dogs are great to, uh, hold you accountable to, uh, you know, go out for a run or to go out for a walk, either one to get out, get outside and uh, get a little fresh air and get active. Yeah. And, and Gary, really with, with your age, walking is great exercise. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I do hate running, and running just beats my body up a little too much. And, uh, um, you know, everybody's got stuff. I'm not saying running's not good. It just, for me, it doesn't, you know, yeah. I think it adds more harm than good. Um, yeah. But everybody's got their own uh, own exercise routine that works best for them. Yeah, you got to listen well, to your body. You know, yeah. they, say, they say that uh, running, uh, something that looks more like sprinting, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that fast. I, I I don't think anything I do qualifies as a sprint. <laughs> but but that type of running is not as hard on your body, I don't think, than that slow plodding jogging where you're just pounding your feet on the pavement one foot after another. So I don't run either, Gary, or I don't jog. But yeah. I like to go to the park and I'll sometimes uh, I'll walk a lap and uh, uh, run a lap and walk a lap and run a lap and yeah. do that kind of thing. Joe, remember when we were younger and you, you know, you'd sprint for stuff. And now even when I go out and play basketball, you know, I never sprint for anything. It's just like, I, I don't know if I can anymore. You know, you pull a hammy, I Gary. Moved, yeah, That's why you haven't pulled any hammies for a little while. Yeah. I moved slow. And uh, you, you just do a real quick calculation. Like, can I get to the sideline before the ball goes out of bounds at a jog? Yeah. If not, I'm not even going to start. Yeah. If there's a loose ball, I don't even bother for it. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's funny. I was playing in this uh, basketball league not too long ago. And, uh, and you know, I was definitely the oldest person in the league, and uh, but one team was were, were they a bunch of second and third graders? <laughs> I wish, <laughs> but uh, I'm telling you, I couldn't guard these people. And uh, it, children, it was, Gary, they're uh, children, yeah. I'll tell you, these whoever I was matched up on, they <laughs> had a field day. <laughs> I could not stay in front of anybody, but some guy then actually started talking smack to me, so uh. I started playing a little bit better just by following him every time he tried to go by me. So, uh, so never, uh, never get the, uh, never talk smack to a jujitsu guy. We kind of get mad every now and then. He looks scary. <laughs> we, I'll put a link to a lot of these things on, on the uh, website or in the show notes, but, uh, we also have on here, uh, Stephen Kessian has on grapplearts.com three great body weight conditioning routines for BJJ. And, uh, you know these these are good for a guide. Uh, yet, yet again, they kind of go into the category of if you just kind of do what I do sometimes and just oh yeah, I'll get the kettlebell and do some Turkish get ups and do some squats and some swings with it. Kind of my problem is when I get kind of tired, I'm done. And if you have a routine set in, I'm going to do five of these, you know, five of these and three of these and then repeat or something like that. Uh, that's going to really get you to push yourself a little bit more. And so the, the beauty of these is they're body weight exercises. So guess what? You have the equipment necessary to pull these things off. And so uh, just by going here, and, and there's uh, some explanation on how they work, but just try those out, and there's no reason why you can't get a great workout with literally yourself and an internet connection. Byron, you were talking about, uh, you know, trying to do more and, and pushing yourself. And um, one of my training partners, Mike, uh, is a, another big lifter. But here in probably the last six months, we've started using the uh, Concept 2 rower a lot. He, he likes to uh, hit the, the gym when he's not uh, doing jiu-jitsu. And uh, um, he started talking to a couple of people who row for the local college here and, and – uh, you know, finding out what are good times and everything on the Concept 2 rower. So he started telling me about them. And 
so what we do is we he will post his time you know he'll send, after he's done he will uh, take a snapshot of it on his phone and text it to me and then i'll be like darn i gotta beat that time so then i'll get fired up all day and wait till work's over then i'll go to the y and and try my hardest to beat his time and we kind of have a little competition between ourselves and you know we live 20 miles apart work out at different you know weight gyms but uh it's a good way to keep us motivated we are always you know i, I know we can't we don't have concept twos at our house either of us so we've had to stop for a little while but that was a good way to get motivated i mean it, even if you just want to do push-ups or turkish get-ups like byron's saying like i could uh do some turkish get-ups and just send a thing to byron hey i just did three sets of five with a 35 pounder you know and then byron's like hey i gotta do that or you know so you can still use your training partners and just uh get into little push-up competitions and stuff like that to keep you motivated and i like it that that that's great uh gary and, and you get you a little bit of that uh camaraderie that uh, i know fuels a lot of people yeah, it's just that that competition. You just, you know, we we always want to beat our training partner and talk smack about it. And uh, it's even fun when your training partner comes back and beats you. And uh, it's just, you know, kind of neat like that. Another thing you could do is add a skill, um, off the mat skill that could help you on the mats. And and the easiest one I could think of that not so easy to do, but just pops into my head is is healthy cooking. Um, uh, a lot of us <laughs> are not good cooks and a lot of us are, th- the meals that we do cook aren't healthy. So maybe this would be a good time to, uh, try a couple new recipes and, and maybe add a new meal to your, uh, quiver <laughs> of meal arrows. I don't know. That was bad. Uh, that, that you could fire off, uh, at hunger, man. Why did I keep digging that hole? Um, <laughs> I knew it was bad when I started it. Quiver. <laughs> uh, no, it's a great point, though, Byron. Um, you know, eating is our fuel, and uh, a lot of us, we don't eat as well as we should, and uh, it's a good time, especially, I mean, some of us probably aren't going to be as active, and uh, we don't all want to come back 25 pounds heavier, so uh, trying to eat a little bit better, and it's just a skill that's going to, you know, help you, help your spouse, help your kids. Um just uh, have better lives. Yeah, and I guess if in my weird example that I don't know where it came from, if you're a bow hunter and you shoot a <laughs> get yeah, a deer, yeah, uh, learning yeah. how to cook that in a healthy it's way. It's another arrow <laughs> in the quiver. No, but I think we all have kind of go-to meals that we can cook, hopefully. If you can cook a few meals, that's great. If you can cook 30 Jimmy meals, John's. you're good to go. But it, most of us have, I don't know, 5 to to 10, 15 meals that we cook kind of on a rotating basis. And if you could slot in a fairly easy and simple meal that you, that you and your family really like that's really healthy, that's great. And if you can't cook, so we're like, we we're talking about that as well. Uh, some people just don't know how to cook. And so they're, they're needing to go get fast food to get these meals and, or get frozen food that you can throw in the oven or whatever. I don't consider that really cooking, <laughs> but if you don't know how to, to take raw chicken or a you know, pound of beef or a group of vegetables and make a meal out of that, uh, now's a great time to learn that because whether you're 20 or 40 or 60, you're going to be cooking pretty much for the rest of your life. And so the skills you learn how to flavor the, 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 your ingredients and, and make uh, different sauces or cook meat properly without overcooking it, all these things, that's going to be – that's going to pay back dividends time and time again. And you single guys out there, I know most – statistically, uh, jiu Podcast, podcasts, a lot of guys – listen to that more than women, but we do have a lot of women that listen to the show and we really appreciate them. But there's no reason a guy can't have a couple of really good meals. And if you're single and you're dating and you could cook a great meal, man, that goes a long way and, uh, to impressing, uh, a lady friend. <laughs> it's been a while since I've even tried that, but <laughs> it, it does. It's like, if you can cook a really good meal or two, show them that you're competent in the kitchen, uh, that's definitely a skill. That's as much of a skill as a good triangle choke, guys. I mean, that's really impressive too. <laughs> Although, probably I not. I think it's. I think a triangle choke is probably a little more impressive skill. Um, I don't think they would even appreciate show. that on a on a uh, on a first date. <laughs> <The> first date. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing, I guess. I mean, it doesn't really matter for a guy or women. If you're able to cook a really good meal, and hey, guess what? It's also healthy. You're doing great. Yeah. 
So that that's just one example of a skill you could add. Um, I don't know, maybe this is the time you get yoga certified to teach a class or uh, kettlebell certification. I don't know. There's a lot of things you could do with this kind of this I was thinking a skill like we talked about earlier, like what Joe did at 50 years old. Um, Bow staff? You know, I think. <laughs> no, uh, skateboarding. I think skateboarding is great. Uh, skill, uh, Joe Ta, I know he loves doing it, so it's it's fun. He's uh, working his core. He's working his balance, as he said, doing his ollies, uh, really working his legs and his cardio. So, uh, I mean, I think that's a, a great skill that you could that will help you on the map. Joe, let me ask you a couple of questions about the skateboarding thing. Shoot. Okay. Ta- Wait, so, did you want him to take an arrow out of his quiver and shoot? <laughs> By now, this quiver's empty. I'm not worried about uh, it. Pull, draw <laughs> the string <Boston> back. Quiver. <laughs> so, has this always been a desire for you to learn this? It, it has. Okay. In fact, it's funny because I tried it when I was 45. And I remember when I was 45, I bought a, my, I had, my kids were teenagers then. So, it's sort of natural. My son and I were going to learn how to skateboard. So, we bought skateboards and you tried it for a week or two and then it just it went away but i remember really specifically thinking i need to learn now because i'm 45 and certainly by 50 you're way too old (laughs) (laughs) that's what impresses me about you learning at 50 and you know 50 is it's just a number and you know joe the way he laughs and jokes and if you just talk to him on the phone, you're like, no way, this guy's 50. He's he's a young guy. But, you know, jujitsu keeps you young. Your attitude keeps you young. But, man, to pick up that sport at 50, and, and that's a tough sport. I mean, easily, you know, our bones aren't as strong as they were. And, uh, you know, it, I, I mean, I, I can just tell myself to just trying to get on a skateboard is just getting on a skateboard and trying to, you know, ride down your driveway is is just so tough. And we're not even talking about doing ollies or dropping in on anything. And, you know, I admire you for picking that sport up. And uh, and I know the fun you have with it. And I know the fun your, your grandson Sebastian has. I see the, the videos you post. And it's it's just so cool watching you two guys out there together doing it. It's uh, You know, it's, one it's thing neat. that – thanks, Gary. You know, one thing that's really helped me stick with this little skateboarding uh, endeavor that I'm on is – it's five years later since the last time I tried it, and that's five more years of doing jujitsu. And skateboarding, the progress is just painfully slow. It yeah. takes a long time to learn, and especially older. And I think these years of doing jujitsu as an older guy, I've realized that I, I'm never going to be as good a grappler as some of the younger guys, but that doesn't mean I can't keep getting better personally and can't keep enjoying it. And so I just translate that same mindset to skateboarding. I'm never going to do a kick flip down a set of stairs. I know. I don't know. Not with that attitude, Joe. (laughs) Not with that (laughs) attitude. (laughs) Are you even going to try? It gets you a big quiver. (laughs) I just recognize that good skateboarding for me is not going to look the same (laughs) as it is for some guy that's in his twenties, and I'm okay with that. And uh, so I I think that's I think that's a key. So let me ask you another question, Joe, because I got a couple for you here. Uh, What 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 was your thought? So you tried it at 45, and you kind of petered out. What did you feel like when you were 50 and you were ordering or buying another skateboard? Did you have some doubts in your mind about this? I'm going to do this again. It's not going to work. Or were you more excited about it? Or or what was your, what was it? What did it feel like? Well, I I was a little more excited about it. And it's kind of weird you asked that question. Do you remember uh, you had Daniel Coyle on the show? Oh yeah. I remember that. Yeah, Yeah. And I, and I got his book, the talent code. And part of the reason why I bought another skateboard is because I'm like, you know, what if I take a skill that I, I have, I, I'm at zero, I'm just barely starting at, as opposed to something like jujitsu I'd already been doing for, for a while, and put some of these uh, practice uh, techniques into play in skateboarding. And I thought I was going to learn to skateboard in six months, and <laughs> that didn't happen. But that was really part of the motivating uh, factor to pick it back up again, is just to to challenge myself and see if I could incrementally get better. Man, think about like if Daniel Coyle is listening right now, um, which he probably you know, is. <laughs> yeah. well, Daniel Coyle has been on the show, um, which Joe just mentioned, but it's so cool that 
first of all, Byron bringing Daniel Coyle on this show, and Daniel Coyle, you know, with his book, The Talent Code, and the other stuff he has. But no matter what, and I know he's influenced more than one person, he influenced one person right here. And, uh, you know, Joe, I, I like what you said, too, about how you knew you weren't going to pick it up in six months. You know, it's just not something. But what I just love is, most people want that instant gratification and jujitsu is not instant gratification because it's a long enduring process that, uh, you know, we, we never stop learning and, and it sounds kind of a little bit like skateboarding and, and I, it just impresses me that you stuck with it knowing that you're not going to be good in six months. And at 50 years old, you know, it's just like you had so many stuff stacked against you to pick up skateboarding. And a lot of it is just, you know, what you see, you see the skateboarders are young, you know, you don't have old skateboarders and that's what people think about jujitsu. You don't have old jujitsu people, but you didn't listen to any of that. You didn't care that you weren't going to get good in six months. You just said, Hey, I want to do this and see if I can translate and, and get decent at this. And, uh, you just stuck with it and, you know, you, you broke through the norms. I mean, people don't expect a 50 year old to start and keep doing it, especially after you tried at 45 and only stuck with it for a couple of weeks. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't know. That's just what impresses me so much about that. Joe, the last question here that I, that I really want to get you with, uh, what's more rare, a guy, uh, would you say you're 53? Yeah. A guy 53 skateboarding or a guy 53, uh, on the mats doing jujitsu. I'd say it's far more rare for a guy 53 skateboarding that doesn't have a long history. Of it. Okay. There are guys out there in their fifties that skated in their twenties. And so they're still doing it. But I think because of the price you pay for one fall, I mean, God dang it. Yeah. <laughs> I keep landing on my left hip and like every couple of months I end up with the bruises on there, the size of a dinner plate. And, um, so beginning is harder. I, I think it's more common to see new jujitsu guys in their fifties. Okay, it is because the the price of failure is just you tap. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. that, that, I mean we do have some falls sometimes, but we're on mats, and just, so it's not as punishing, uh, maybe. So, what's the community like? Are, are the the young guys like really encouraging? Do you go to skate parks much, and are you so? Are you mostly skate at the house? But if you go out, are people like encouraging? Hey, look at this guy; he's doing it. Is it, are they, are they happy to see you or are you just in the way sometimes? What do you feel like? You know, for the longest time, I wouldn't go to the skate park if anybody else was there. I just felt so insecure and, uh, just anticipating, you know, a negative reaction. Uh, but as I've got more confident and I've gone, the vibe at, at the skate park is really similar to the vibe at jujitsu. I mean, all the kids are encouraging and, um, Cool. So yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. And, and hey, we, you know, Joe, one thing I always liked is, uh, you know, I know you train at two different places, but I would see you post and talking about on Facebook, talking about skating, and I would see some of the, uh, I think his name's Pagan, would be talking to you about skating uh, when you're out in Louisiana, and it seemed like you guys would hook up at places, and that's just cool. Like a younger jujitsu guy taking out the older jujitsu guy and you guys skating together. I just thought that's always seemed pretty cool. The camaraderie there too. Yeah, absolutely. So we mentioned other activities, you know, like we go back to the quote, uh, do something and it'll help you be happier. Uh, one of those could be learn how to cook, read a book and, and why not Daniel Coyle's the talent code. And it, that, that's a great one for students wanting to, you know, become more talented at really anything. Uh, and coaches out there, uh, his Daniel Coyle's book, the culture code is is very valuable tool to help you shape the culture of your gym and and uh, move it in in the right direction. So uh, you can't go wrong with Daniel Coyle's. He's got several books. He's he's he writes in an entertaining way and in a very informative way. He's a storyteller, and so I think that that really helps me remember his lessons because he always backs them up with a with a great story. So. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm glad you brought him and up again, back. but just to say, yeah. read a book. Yeah. If you're sitting at home yeah. bored, read a book. And go back to our uh, when we had him on the show. Go back to that show and uh, um, give him a listen. All right, guys, it's been fun. We don't. I don't have an article of the week because we've had several articles we've kind of talked about and used for guidance for our conversation. 
this time. Oh, I want to say this. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, go to Patreon. Uh, there'll be a link in the show notes to Patreon. You can pledge a dollar, two or three per episode, and uh, that really helps out the show. Um, I mail you out a five-inch BJJ Brick Gee Patch. For this month, I'm not going to... Um, enter anything in for the pledges. I don't I don't know who out there is having a hard time paying bills and, and that sort of thing. That's uh, awesome, Byron. But so yeah, like you said, Gary, your job is pretty stable. I'm a firefighter. My job is like my job is stable. <laughs> like yeah. uh, if anything I'll probably be working a little bit more. And so yeah. uh this week I'm gonna be supporting the podcast <laughs> uh, and you know just you know, all, I really appreciate all the Patreon supporters we have, but if if just a couple of them are having a hard time uh, paying their bills, um, I, I you know if if that's you, just listen for free. That's great, and you know that, that's really cool. And and if you're able to support for a certain amount of time, really appreciate that. I don't know how many of the Patreon supporters are having having tough times out there with their job statuses, but I don't want to be part of the problem. <laughs> and so with with the podcast. Uh, we're strong enough to take a you know a little bit of time, a couple couple of months maybe, or just have me uh, pay the hosting fees and and those sort of things that that come up. Um, so we'll do that. Um, hopefully things bounce back soon. But I don't, man. I just hate to think that a couple of our Patreon supporters lose their jobs and then they see at the end of the month that they got charged four or five dollars for supporting the BJ Break podcast when at a time that they're having a hard time anyway. So uh, not going to do. We still want Patreon supporters, and you can still sign up. And and that, and that sort of thing. And when we kick this back up, maybe in in a month or two, um, you know, support would be greatly appreciated. But for this month, and that we're at the end of the month anyway, and that's when it that's when I have to enter in stuff. Um, just gonna leave it blank. So uh, don't be shocked when there's nothing coming out for Patreon. Well, my hats off to you, Byron. That was uh, proactive and, and good thinking. Yeah. Well, I I hate to 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 draw from our some of our greatest fans. Uh, at a time when it would be difficult for them. So that's the thought on that one. But had had a good time this week. Uh, we're going to just try to keep the show going as, as normal. Um, as it, it, we, we are at a disadvantage as far as being able to be any sort of news or up-to-date information. Like I said, uh, this is a week and a half before it publishes when we record this. So maybe here in Wichita, it's total lockdown and chaos. Maybe it's almost blown over. Who? I don't know. I doubt that's the case. But um, possibly of doing like a little mini episode, uh, just updating some things or maybe encouraging you guys. I don't know what, what's really around the corner. Um, I don't know. How are you guys? Do you guys feel good about uh, training maybe in two months or so or three months back on the mats, having gyms open back up? or? I think a couple months. Um I will tell you, I'm kind of like you, Byron. I'm I'm still training. Um, I just have one training partner that I'm working with, and uh, you know, I guess that's my way of trying to uh, keep myself healthy. And uh, you know, but um, I, I think within a couple months we'll be back. At least I'm praying. A couple months sounds like a long time. I'm I, I'm hoping quicker than that to tell you the truth. Yeah. the The, the weird thing is, um, have you guys ever heard of the Dunning Kruger effect? I've heard of it. I don't know what it is. Tell me about it. Okay. And and a little bit off topic, but not really, because gym owners had a difficult decision to make about uh, closing, and they'll have the same decision to make about reopening. Um, so the Dunning-Kruger effect, it's a, it's a, it's it represented on a graph. And so the graph starts out very low, and it goes up like a sharp peak, and then it goes, it dips back down, and then it, it kind of goes up gradually. Um, and, and this represents uh, the vertical axis represents knowledge, and so no the vertical axis represents. I should pull it up on Google, but the vertical axis represents confidence, and then the the horizontal axis represents knowledge. And as as you learn a little bit about something, people typically get very confident about their understanding about something. And so as we've all learned a little bit about jujitsu, like you come in and, and you've been there for three months, man, I know what's going on. <laughs> I know how to do an arm bar. I know how to shrimp crawl. This stuff is easy. And, 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 and as you learn a little bit more, you see there's a lot of stuff I don't even know about. Like, not that I don't, not that I don't know how to do a inverted triangle. I didn't even know that was a thing. And so as, as you learn more, your confidence goes down. 
And although your your knowledge base is increasing, it goes down, and and eventually it'll start to rise. Your confidence will start to rise again as you become uh, more towards the uh, more towards mastery, I guess, or more towards a deeper understanding of something like that. But like the initial thing is, people tend to peak very early on in their confidence about a topic, whether it's economics or jujitsu or uh, kettlebell lifting or whatever it is, or an outbreak. Like, yeah, I understand this, what's happening. But, uh, but as, as you learn more and how complicated things are, sometimes, uh, your, your confidence will dip rightfully. So as you kind of get kicked <laughs> in, into reality, like, I don't really understand any of this stuff that's going on. And, and then it will hopefully go back up if you continue to learn about this thing. So gym owners were kind of, I thought I witnessed this on, a, on pretty much, I don't think very many gym owners are uh, really knowledgeable about outbreaks. <laughs> That's not something that we care about or study and, and prepare for. Yeah, but I, I think most of them have watched Contagion, though, Bob. That's true. That, and that's that's where you get that peak of, of I understand this thing. <laughs> and they've done a crew of it. You get confident that you know what's going on. So uh, the, some a lot of them are put in situations that have to make a, make the call about to stay open or how to open if you do open, that sort of thing. And we're operating in the knowledge uh, versus confidence thing towards that peak, that first peak. And, um, yeah, I don't. I, I don't trust myself to to know about viruses or outbreaks because I I know there's a lot more to it. I don't have any sort of medical degree. I don't have any sort of biology degree or any, like I I don't know. It's, I know it's very complicated, and so I'm not confident that if I had a gym, I'd know when to open it up. I would just have to trust, and and whether they're right or they're wrong, trust authority figures to help me with that decision. And I think with jujitsu, it's different than. Like here, our YMCA's are closed, so I can't go in and lift weights in the same building Gary's lifting weights in. How about grappling? <laughs> That's a disaster of a situation for spreading viruses or bacteria or any sort of a, a thing that Gary might have that he was wanting to share with people. Uh, I don't know. So it, maybe it's not. So I don't even know if if if, it's, if if having having a virus and doing jiu-jitsu is much different than having bi- virus and lifting weights together. Maybe, so like that, that's the thing. I don't even know. I assume it is, but I'm in that valley of, I know some, but I know I'd know. A, I there's a lot more I don't know, and uh, I just think that that gym owners are putting that that odd spot of make a decision, and we don't know much about this topic, but here you go, and their livelihoods are on the line, and their the health of their students are on the line, the the health of the students' families could be on the line. Are we blown out of proportion? Are we underblowing it out of proportion? Is it another quiver in our another arrow in our quiver? <laughs> I don't know, but if you it, it happens with most things when people are become really confident in making a decision about something they just learned about yesterday, they're typically at the at that peak of the Denny Kruger effect. They have a lot of confidence and almost no knowledge of a topic. And I find myself there quite a bit. You know, it, it, you learn something about something and you feel, yeah, I, I understand this, and then you learn a little bit more like, okay, there's, it's deeper. And I'm, I'm fortunate. I have a lot of medical people in my family and, and they could talk at the second minute mark. I'm like, okay, they're already over my head. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys have any opinions about that? Did I explain it well at all? Did it make sense? What did you yeah. say? <laughs> Very zoned out. Yeah, I was, I was looking at Facebook. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> This no. is how Joe and I react when our boss starts talking. <laughs> exactly. Got my phone out. I'm just scrolling. <laughs> now, something I find interesting about what you said, at least I think the, the two are related, is when you don't know much about a topic and as you're gathering some knowledge, each bit of new knowledge, especially depending on how it's presented to you, has the ability to drastically change the way you feel about it. So Gary had commented earlier, I think maybe before we started recording, that he wasn't really watching the news anymore. And I have diminished the amount of news I'm consuming on purpose because I find myself, uh, somebody will come on and talk for 50 minutes. I'll be like, okay, it's not that bad. This guy just reassured us it's going to you know, be okay. And then an hour later, somebody will come on and I'll be like, oh, my God, they're going to shut – down the whole state and they're going to close the borders and you know so i think um how you get your information is probably important as you're gaining more information on a topic like this my thought of it is i won't 
A, I'm not smart enough to understand the details behind uh, how a virus operates and, and what's it, mix that with you need an economics degree and a manufacturing degree. And like, there, there's, there's so much complex things going on. Uh, I don't know. I'd hate to be a gym owner and having to make that decision and think that I can <laughs> make decision. it perfect. Um, I would err on the side of safety for your students and their families. Yeah. The hard part is, is like you said, a lot of these schools may not be able to come back and it's just a tough thing. You, you know, you're erring on the side of caution. You're taking care of your friends and, you know, your training partners, but also too, that could be, you know, the end of your career and uh, the end of your school. That's yeah. just a, uh, man, that's a decision. I, uh, I, hey, that'd be a tough one. Hey, this, this might not be a fair question because you guys haven't had a chance to think about it. And I haven't either, so I don't have an answer. But I'm very confident in my answer, Joe, because the Denning Kruger oh. effect. So I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay. Okay. What do you say to students? How do you encourage the students who um, are extremely motivated by competition? Because all the big competition has just been yeah. shut down. And there's guys that uh, have been training like for three months, five months for a big tournament that was supposed to happen the next month or two, and it's just gone now. This, um, yes. Uh, that's, a great that's a great question. And a lot of our audience are very motivated by competition. There's, there's definitely a silver lighting to this. If, if, if you come out of this healthy and hopefully your whole family does as well, like, you know, um, the jujitsu has shut down. It's not for you. It's not cause your knee is busted. It's nobody's getting hard training in. And if you can come out of that in top shape, come out of that, also learning about different parts of the game, you know, studying competition, studying like the actual people that are in your competition, studying your weight class and your age category footage and, and really hit this off the mat studying hard. You're going to come out of this thing so much better as far as it, most of your actual competition is doing some off the mat training. They're doing some studying, but they're not taking it seriously. They're, they're under motivated at this time. So take that as a fuel source and as they're being lazy and, and really taking a couple of months off of training and being serious about their jujitsu, amp yours up and you will, you will have a amazing year uh, or season or whatever that's going to be when, when the competition heats back up and you get back on the mats. This is an opportunity for those who are serious about getting good at grappling. Yeah, we, well, that's one thing we didn't touch on too much on the episode, uh, other than the fact that there's a lot of free or discounted material available right now. But, um, why you've got all this extra time, gather everything available to you on a particular topic that you wanted to study in jiu-jitsu. You know, everything about the Kimura, everything about taking the back. If there's a an area of study you've been meaning to do, now's your time. Yeah. Gary, anything to add on that one? No, I, I like it. It it, it kind of reminded me of when I was talking about when I was younger in high school and college playing sports, and I was always the smallest guy. And like off season, I, I worked harder than everybody. Um, this was back in the day where you didn't have AAU ball, so you didn't play year round. Um, but I, I did exactly what you said, Byron, and I still have the philosophy today. And that's one of the reasons why I try to work out at least an hour every single day of the year. And and uh, is when I'm not training. This is what I always tell myself: somebody else is and getting better. And uh, I, I, I do that not just with uh, 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 athletics and jujitsu. I do it with uh, work, too. You know, I don't want anybody to be better than me at work. You know, I want to be the, the best one out there. And, uh, you know, I always say that, you know, I need to uh, step my game up. I don't want somebody else's work, and I need to get better. And uh, so it's up to me to outwork everybody. And I know that's still an old-fashioned way, you know, where people say work smarter, you know, more, work more efficiently. But uh, me, I just want to put that output out there and just bury you. Uh, just uh, make it so you can't breathe. Man. Well, Gary, I'm sorry that you felt like in your gym class you were the smallest guy. <laughs> I was. I was always the smallest <laughs> Come guy. Come on, Gary. So. You didn't even get it. Uh, Public showers and all. <laughs> yeah. Literally yeah. and figuratively. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I encourage you guys to keep training uh, and, uh, and, and keep getting sweaty. And not just that, stay sweaty, my friends. 
And don't forget to wash your hands and keep plenty of soap in your large quiver. Train hard, uh, train by yourself, and get better, guys. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you on the mats. <laughs> we'll see you on the mats someday. Don't know when, but we will see you on the mats again. Thank you for listening. I hope you find the time today to roll. After all, the best way to get better at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Thank you.